Hi there, grade 10, 11s and 12s. Welcome to Dandelion Delphi Tutorials. Today we're going to look at our IT pad and what is required to create the interface. I usually do this before the learners start with phase one and then use the screenshots of your interface in your pad phase one. This will help you to give you direction as to what you want your pad to do. You get marks for the interface in both phase one and phase two. So let's score full marks from the start. The first thing that you need to remember is that you need to have at least three forms or three tab sheets. I prefer the page control with the tab sheets as it makes the coding a bit simpler. When you're designing your interface, you need to make sure that it has a logical flow. That means we have input, processing and output, or from left to right, input, processing and output. Here is an example for you. We have the input here, and then we have the submit button, and we have our output on the right. You could also have your input at the top, your submit button here, and your output at the bottom. On one tab sheet, you want to group the different parts of your program together using panels or group boxes. Group boxes have the advantage that it can have a caption. So you could group a section together using a group box with a caption. Make changes to your tab order in the object inspector so that the user can use their tab key to jump from one object to the next. So you want to start with tab order zero at the first input, and then the second input must be one, and then two, and so on. For every pad, we usually need a combo box, radio group, or list box, because we have to do validation on them later. But think about your program and decide where a combo box or radio group would be appropriate for you to use. This is usually things like they have to select a province, or maybe there's a certain number of schools that learners can select from, depending on your scenario. If you have yes, no fields for databases, grade 11s and 12s, or grade 10s, you maybe have a true false input, then make use of a checkbox. And for any date that needs to be entered by the user, choose a date time picker to add to your form. But make sure that your date time picker has a label above it to explain to the user what to do. And for any integer input, make use of spin edits. Every single object on your form needs to be renamed. And make sure that you use the correct prefixes for each component. Don't forget to rename your form. If you have a look at your structure, you will be able to see whether you have renamed all your objects on your form. So you can scroll down here and make sure each and every single one of them has a unique name and that you don't leave them as IMG1 and EDT1 and so on. Don't forget once you've renamed to go back and change the captions of your form and your tab sheets and anything else that has a caption. And for the text property, I suggest that you put default input in there. That just speeds up your processing and your testing of your pad as you're going to run it often. So as you can see on this example, there are, the caption has been changed for the form. It no longer says FRM paint, as well as default input has been placed in the edit boxes. Make sure that these tabs of yours also have unique names. Make use of colors and pictures that will fit the scenario to make your pad's interface interesting. Just a note that a tab sheet can't change color, so the best is to load an image object and then load a picture in there to make it look nice. It is important to have proper names to tell the user what to do. Above an edit box, like for example, adding someone's name, don't just say name, say please enter your name. Each of your forms or tab sheets need navigation buttons. These are the buttons next, home, back, and a help button as well. Obviously on your last page or your last tab sheet, you won't have a next button because there's no place to go next. And on your home tab, you won't have a home button. But on most of them, you will have a back. Again, on the home tab, it doesn't make sense to have a back. But help is important to have on each of your tab sheets. 
At this point, your program does not need any functionality yet. That will be done in phase two, so you don't need to code anything at this point. Grade 10s, at this point, you have enough to start your phase one with. Grade 11 and 12s, you can continue to watch. You need to decide on what would be appropriate to use as combo boxes in your form so that you can ensure valid input is entered. You could populate a combo box using, for example, the hotel ID in my example, or you could also use a radio group or combo box and type in all the provinces so that you sure the user will enter the correct information. Possibly more appropriate for the user is to select a hotel name as these hotel IDs might not make sense for them. So you could use code to populate your combo box using the hotel names. So maybe you have a DB grid there to display your database in. And then I have my combo box here. I didn't write code for it at the moment, so there would be nothing here, but that would be a good place to maybe make a procedure to read all the data from your database for the names into this combo box here. Should a new hotel be added, you can then call that procedure to add it to your combo box as well. Spend lots of time in creating an interface since you are marked on it twice in phase one as well as in phase two. And make sure that you take note of your logical flow and choosing the correct objects. Thank you for watching Dandelion Delphi Tutorials. Hope to see you soon.